Hello, my name is Keith Burdett, Superintendent of Mason County Schools. You know, as a student of Mason County Schools and a former graduate of Mason County Schools, I know how much this county cares for its students. And I'm going to give you the opportunity to express your support again through something I want to discuss today, and it's through the school excess levy. We have a school excess levy on the ballot November the 8th, and the purpose of the conversation here today is just to tell you about some of the things uh, about the, the levy, what it does, and about some of the good things that are going on in Mason County Schools. I was speaking to a group recently and someone asked, what is an excess levy? That's a legitimate question because it's on the ballot. So let me try to explain it in as simple uh, ways as I can. When we pay our property tax on vehicles or boats or we pay our real estate tax, a portion of that is sent to the state and then it comes back to the county school system through something called the school aid formula. It's something that the state uses to calculate how much money uh, should be apportioned out based on the enrollment of students. Well, most counties in the state have something called an excess levy. They want to provide extra support for extra things for students along the way. Mason County is one of those that has an excess levy, and that excess levy has been in place since May of 1950. For 72 years, continuously, Mason County citizens have approved the continuation of this levy. It does provide extra support for our students, and I'll tell you about the, what that does in just a little bit. The one thing I want to stress about the levy that's on the ballot on November the 8th is that this is a continuation of the existing levy. It is not an increase in tax rates. It is not an increase in tax rates. It's just an extension of what we currently have in place. The current levy expires June 30th, 2024. You might ask, why are we running the levy at this point in time? Well, the legislature has determined that excess levies um, and, and bond elections and so forth need to sync up with either a primary election or a general election. Well, when you look at the calendar and you look at what the elections are available between now and June 30th of 2024, you really have two opportunities. It's on November the 8th for the general election, November 8th, 2022, or in May or June of 2024. So it just seemed more, re uh, more reasonable and for better planning purposes for us to go ahead and to provide this opportunity for, to the citizens at this point in time. What this levy would do, an approval of this would extend the levy, the current levy, through June 30th, 2029. It's an extension of five years beyond the current 2024. So approval of the levy will extend it until June 30th, 2029, again with no increase in taxes. This levy amounts to about $7.5 million. <clears throat> That's about 18% of our operating budget. Now, I think that you can probably imagine if you were in a household and you were depending on a certain amount of money and suddenly it went away, if 18% of your money went away at one point in time, you would have to make some hard choices. You might decide you need to get an additional job or another job to raise additional funds or make some cuts within the household. Well, obviously, finding other sources is very, very difficult to do for a school system, so it would probably result in some cuts. And we don't really want to see that happen. But it is about $7.5 million, about 18% of our operating budget. So what does it go for? Well, it basically breaks down into about seven different categories, personnel, textbooks, technology, co-curricular and extracurricular activities, maintenance, repairs, and utilities, student transportation, and agency support. And let me just provide a few of the details about that. Mason County is able through this excess levy to provide a little bit of extra money to our teachers above what the state minimum is. It also provides a very good optical and dental program uh, for, for the employees as we try to attract and retain good teachers. It also provides for additional school nurses beyond what the state aid formula calls for. It also provides big support for co-curricular and extracurricular activities. It is also used uh, for maintenance, repairs, and utilities, as I mentioned earlier. It also provides technology for our students. We have a, a big emphasis of technology uh, within our school system. And one of the other important areas, as I mentioned earlier, is about the agency support. Let me break that down and give you a little more information. 
The excess levy pays for three PRO officers, prevention resource officers, that are stationed in our three junior high high schools. It also, we also use money from the levy to support the Mason County Public Library, also to the WVU Cooperative Extension Service to help support 4-H members throughout the county, and there's a portion that goes to the Mason County Fair. More details about the excess levy can be found on our website. Go to Mason County Schools, West Virginia and, and find that information. Just a little bit more about some of the things that are, the good things that are going on in Mason County Schools, because I am absolutely convinced that if we are, if we are doing our absolute best for our students, that the public will see that and realize that, that we're making great progress and great strides and have a school system that we can be very proud of. Let me just tell you a few things that I think are, are, are shining examples of things that are going right in our school system. We know we're not a perfect school system, but I know that we are on a path that is, is very exciting and, and very promising. For instance, in our general summative assessments last year, no one is extremely proud of, of how some of the scores were statewide. However, one thing that I'm very, very pleased about is that the rate of improvement in Mason County exceeded what the state's average were. For instance, let me give you an example. In mathematics, the state's scores increased by about 5%. In Mason County, our scores increased by 7%. In reading, the state's average scores improved by about 2%. In Mason County, they improved by 5%. In science, the scores increased by about 1% statewide. In Mason County, they increased by 3%. Also, let's put it to you this way. If you're ranking student performance on the general summary of assessments by county, one through 55, and you compare the previous year to last year, in mathematics, Mason County moved up the rankings six places. In reading, Mason County moved up 13 places. And in science, Mason County moved up the rankings 13 places. When you look at that sort of data, that helps you assure you, I think, that we are on a right path and we are continuing to uh, implement plans and strategies that are increasing student, uh, student achievement. I also have a strong background in career technical education and we have seen the enrollment in career technical education increase. We're up about 60 additional students at the Mason County Career Center this year. We've also been able to implement a business program back to the Mason County Career Center as well as at Wahama High School and we've implemented a sports medicine program. More good news for Mason County. We had state finalists in the State Teacher of the Year program and in the State Service Personnel of the Year program. Finalists in both of those areas. What can I say about co-curricular and extracurricular activities? You know where we are as far as athletics and our bands and our uh, career technical education student organizations like FFA and Skills USA. You know, it's, it's, it's astonishing to realize that Mason County Schools last year had the state champion team or runner-up in five different sports. Five different sports. Part of that support for those types of activities come through the school excess levy. We've also been very, very involved with business and industry and, and have a public presence out there. You'll see us at, at, at the Christmas parade. You've seen us at the Mason County Fair where we distributed about 6,000 books to students as they, and their families as they came by our booth at the Mason County Fair. And of course, with the announcement of Nucor coming to West Virginia, coming to Mason County, we have been building a relationship with them along with the other industries that already have been our partners for many, many years. And I want to stress one thing. As you know, when Nucor made the announcement they were coming to Mason County, they presented Mason County Schools with a $1 million check. The, the board has not spent that money yet, but they are looking very heavily, and we've been hearing information about ways to improve school security, because we know that is a priority. We know that parents want to have their their children safe when they come to school. And we're looking at ways to improve school security throughout the county. And to put that in perspective, that was a $1 million one-time gift. The school excess levy is approximately $7.5 million annually. So I think you can see how important this excess levy is to the school system. Some other things, <clears throat> Mason County Schools will be hosting the regional uh, regional Social Studies Fair and the Regional Science Fair this year. Something that hasn't happened, I don't think, uh, in any time recent, if, if ever. 
but we will be hosting that because I want people to see that Mason County Schools is a good quality school system and we want people from outside to come and see us and our students can interact with them and can learn from them. Again, my name is Keith Burdett. If you have any particular questions about the excess levy, again, you can look to, look to our website or feel free to call the board office and talk with me. Uh, the board office number is 304-675-4540. Thank you for listening.